Today in the chip will spotlight the all new Klein Tools MM300 non-auto ranging. Let's take a look. Klein MM300 shipped via Amazon for around $43 Canadian, about $35 US. Uh, definitely in the cheapo zone, but is it any good? This is the first Klein on the channel. I have heard lots, tons actually, about the build quality of these things. Well, we'll soon find out. The MM300 ships in this pretty decent bubble wrap style box. Um, nice and well uh, protected. In the back you can see we have our test leads and a couple of AAA batteries. That's it, that's all. Now once again, this is a pretty sparse meter. Uh, function wise, it's not going to turn any heads. We're talking a 2000 count non-auto ranging LCD display. Does come with a pretty decent user manual, especially if you are new to the world of multimeters. And if you are new to the world of multimeters, well, congratulations. Welcome. Good to have you aboard. Nice and verbose. A lot of photographs. Um, tells you the basics, the ins and outs of how to use your multimeter. So uh, kudos to Klein for doing that. This one comes in English and Spanish. There you have it. Now those test leads as well, they are 10 amp rated, cat 3, 600 volts. They do have that safety shroud on top, comes easily off. Um, actually not that pointy per se, but a good size tip on the end. On the reverse, we have that shrouded tip and it has that little protective layer. All in all, pretty decent in terms of quality. Leads themselves to carry the Klein logo as well. So they are definitely made for the multimeter and not just thrown in as an extra, extra. Once again, this is a sparse meter in terms of functionality. It does 600 volts ACDC. No capacitance and get this for resistance up to a measly two mega ohm. Uh, yeah, so once again, in terms of overall function set, not very much. The body of the meter is actually quite a nice color. It's a Keysight style orange, but a little bit more vibrant, a little more lively, and it really stands out on the bench. So um, kudos to Klein for coming up with this interesting color for the uh, boot because it really, really works. Speaking of the boot itself, it is actually part of the molded assembly, so it does not come off. You're not going to be able to just pull it off. No, it doesn't do it that way. Um, it is integrated into the form factor, and overall, I really like the ergos. You do have that nice recessed holders for your leads. Um, at first, I thought this was some sort of a hanger or NCV, but uh, none of the above. If we look at that tilting bale, nice thick excellent and something i don't see too often on multimeters but that i really like is it actually has if you can see that a nice rubberized inlay so when you're down on a slippery surface it will not move the meter whatsoever it really sticks hey excellent something else worth noting as well you do see that etl label on the meter itself uh, intertech approved so this has been tested by a third party for safety great starting off in the 12 o'clock position or the off followed by volts ac up to 600 volts diode and continuity dc current from 200 microamps to 10 amps battery tester 9 volt and 1.5 volt resistance up to 2 mega ohm. finally volts dc 200 millivolts to 600 volts on the bottom left we're greeted with our 10 amp input it is fused as well on the bottom here we have our commenter ground and finally on the far right we have our bolt resistance dial continuity microamp and milliamp at the top it is slim pickens simply a hold and a standard touch hold that's all let's turn the meter on for the first time shall we and we are sitting in AC mode right now, 600 volts. You see we have that high voltage indicator at the top left. And wow, look at that font. I wanted to say funk. That is a funky, chunky font, folks. Wow. Um, not sure, not sure if I'm liking that. It is definitely chunky. Mm. 
So really depending what you want in terms of a display, you may or may not like this. Personally, uh, I don't know. I find it just a chunky looking display that was chunky, not funky. Now, once again, there is no backlight, so you are really at the mercy of this uh, display for your overall viewing. Uh, depending on the angle, um, it may or may not look so great, but um, eh, yeah, I'm kind of, yeah. You see, accuracy is what we're looking at. We want to see 250 millivolts, and we are pretty darn close, 249. Next up, we want to see 2.50, and spot on, Mystic Line. 2.50 volts, beauty. Taking a quick look size-wise, I've got a couple of other meters beside it, and we can see the Habitat 118A on the left. Definitely a bigger, larger meter. Um, this client is more in tune with its little brother, the 113C on the right. Unlike the 113C, which is really feature-packed for such a small meter, uh, the MM300 from Klein is really sparse, Spartan. Next to nothing in terms of a feature set. Uh, yeah. Diode time is next. Here we go, starting off with the green LED. And, oh, nothing, nothing. The yellow, wow, nothing again. The red, well, it is illuminated, but, um, yeah, no forward voltage drop. Over to the blue. Jeez, and the white. Wow. Okay, so uh, in terms of illumination, uh, yeah, that really sucked the big one. So only the red LED was able to uh, get lit. Um, none of them displayed a forward voltage drop. Eh, not so great. Not so great at all. Check a standard diode. And yeah, no worries there. So... Standard diodes, it's all right, but uh, if you want to check LEDs, you're going to want to look elsewhere. According to Mr. Beckman, output voltage in dial mode is a paltry 1.9 volts. Not enough. Continuity is next. Three, two, one. Oh my God. Wow, Granny was slow, but she was 103. That is incredibly slow. Oh, Lord. Definitely one of the worst continuities I have heard in terms of quickness. Yeah, it's latched, but it is slow as molasses in December. I think I used that joke once before, didn't I? Gotta come up with better jokes. Yeah, really bad continuity. Wow. Let's see if the Probe Masters are any better. Probe Masters are in, locked, and loaded. Here we go. Ah! Oh my gosh, well, hey, continuity-wise, this meter is a pass. It is just way too, I don't know, funky. Funky. See, I did it again. I, I, why do I keep saying funky? Yeah. We're going to check high current out quickly, sitting at about 680 milliamps. Here we go. 1.74 amps. Not an issue. 3.8 amps, that well, looks to be pretty well spot on. 5.68, coming up with 5.72 on the long way. Let's just max it out, why don't we? 10.35 amps, 10.28 on the long way. So in terms of high current, yeah, not an issue. Uh, it seems to be holding out just fine. Look at it, milliamps right now, sitting at 20 milliamps, coming to this 19.9 on the climb. 18.90, 18.9, 17.8, 17 17.8 milliamps don't seem to be a problem whatsoever. 13 milliamps, 12.9, let's go right down to 5 milliamps even. 5 milliamps, 4.9, all right, take it down 1 milliamp even. Even Steven and coming up is 1.9. I'm sorry, 0.9 milliamps. So, hey, if you're into low current, at least this should do the trick. Quick look at resistance. I wasn't going to bother with such a paltry range of 2 mega ohm, but eh, why not? Okay, let's see. We're going to get 2 mega ohm. Oh, it is very slow to range. 
it's thinking all incredibly slow. Wow. Oh, okay. Let's try one mega ohm. Yeah, it is just incredibly slow on that resistance range. Let's try 110k. That's a little bit better. 111k. Alrighty. 500k. So it's still slow, but um, a little bit faster on the lower settings. Um, eh. Tear down time. Time to take this funky meter apart and see what is on the inside. Now, as I mentioned before, hear lots about that Klein build quality. Heck, some people even compare these things to flukes. Well, let's take a look. So on the back of the unit, we have one, two, three, four, five, six Phillips screws. Uh, but first, I'm going to take out that battery assembly. And it is just one screw that's holding the battery casing inside. Comes out just like so. One nice metal insert here. So no worries about taking that uh, battery compartment off multiple times. Not going to be a problem. All right, I'm going to take these batteries off. And uh, go further. Alrighty, that should do the trick. Let's pull it out and see what we have here. Oh, well, that is a pleasant surprise. Okay, well, first off, no shielding. There's the back of the unit right there, ABS plastic. Um, looks like a pretty decent quality grade as well, but uh, no shielding. Do have some nice ridge blast protection going on here, nice thick lip. Um, that's nice to see. Well, that's what you're paying for folks check out the build quality here it is really something stellar uh very very nice let's start off with those input jacks those are screwed down and nutted on they ain't going anywhere beautiful beautiful uh did i say beautiful awesome nice thick current shunt and we have a couple of ceramic fuses uh, we have that 10 amp 600 volt on the high current side and it is a 600 volt 200 milliamp on the low current. The high current has a 6.3 by 32 millimeter fuse, whereas the milliamp is a 5 by 20, so they are easily available. Now, one thing I was looking at off camera caught my eye. I thought at first I had somehow screwed up the uh, meter. I did not. This is the way the meter is designed. Yeah, looks like somebody took a Dremel and actually cut off part of the plastic here in order to get that assembly through with the battery holder. So when you put it in, it comes up like so to make contact with the batteries. But I mean, I've never seen this kind of work before. I mean, obviously this is done, I'm assuming by hand. Um, yeah, a little interesting. Hmm, okay. Now, one thing I don't like is the fact that if you do have to change the fuses, you're going to have to take apart all six of those screws because you don't have easy access. And unfortunately, um, you're going metal into plastic. Uh, none of those six inserts have any sort of threading. Eh. Over on the voltage side, we have a nice metal oxide varistor, and that actually carries the VDE symbol. So uh, VDE is another safety standard as well on some components. And that just lets you know that that is a quality, quality component. As well, we have not one, but two PTCs, a couple of nice big MELF resistors. And moving up the board, there is our pathetic piezo. Oh, yeah, pathetic. Horrible continuity coming out of this thing. Wow. No IC on this side of the board, so I'm going to go in a little bit deeper. All right, with a little bit of gentle persuasion after taking off those hex nuts we are on the other side oh look at that gorgeous gold plated rotary selector tracks nicely done and we have one long wire here that's leading from the high current fuse to the current shunt as well um oh i thought we we're gonna get a look at that ic but unfortunately it is cobbed uh, really not much else on that side of the board 
There is the top of the display for the LCD. Hmm, alrighty. And if we take a look at those rotary selector pads, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. And uh, I'd say those are gold plated as well. Um, so that's always good to see for long term tear and wear, or is that wear and tear? On the top of the unit here, it's just a little felt pad. Uh, just for a little bit of added protection that the PCB is laying on top of. Um, once again, there's the screw in for those input jacks. And uh, nice greasing going on. And yeah, it is a ball bearing type of assembly, uh, which is always nice to see. Alrighty, I'm going to put everything to get back together. Come back with my closing thoughts. Closing thoughts on the Klein MM300. Well, you know what? Eh, I find it, well, funky and mediocre. Pros, it has some truly good build quality. Um, yeah, it is a nicely designed overall little beast. I do like the color and uh, interior wise, well, you know, that input protection was just great. It's got good accuracy all around. Um, can I say it's hard to switch, even if your hands aren't super big. It's just a hard selector to get a hold of. Um, that being said, the ranges themselves are, let's face it, they're mediocre at best. No capacitance range. The LED performance was uh, completely dismal. Eh, definitely could do a lot better. Finally, that battery PCB connectivity is really poorly designed. I can definitely see that failing at some point. Uh, it is just not in there very well. Uh, the overall execution could have been done differently. Yeah, the MM300, you know, it's, it's one of these funky meters that just, I don't know how to really catalog at the end of the day because, you know, it's not a bad meter, but it's certainly not a great one either. The Klein MM300 gets a 2.5 out of 5 stars. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Hey, got some great and shall I say funky meters coming up. Next review will be really, really something a little different. Stay tuned for that. Wow, still recovering from that Sanwell week. That was a lot of fun. Gosh, those Sanwell products really put a smile on my face. Congrats again to our winner, Mauricio. Hey, Mauricio, your Sanwell is en route to you. Enjoy it. Thanks again for watching, everybody. Till the next one, keep on testing.